Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church Online. We are so happy to have you worshiping with us. We want to begin by saying thank you to Stephanie Kissler for these lovely altar flowers. We also want to remind you that this is a communion service. So if you have some bread, some wine and grape juice and keep those nearby, we will all commune together later in the service. We begin now with our gathering hymn. Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. 
we question your ways when we try different from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in yours. We take offense at your teaching and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the word of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus the worker of miracle, there are always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. <laughs> Let us all pray together. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet. Like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you, 
even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? And she replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Now, this is the only mention of Jesus in this entire section that was read today. And there's an obscure reference at best. The rest of the reading goes into the detail of John's death. But there's not much of the good news in this gospel reading. So what is the it that Herod heard? Remember this from last week's gospel reading? Then Jesus went out about among the villagers teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. So the twelve went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. So the people are wondering, who is this Jesus? Some suggest John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others a prophet. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. It's as if Herod is fearing a ghost has returned to torment him. Because Mark goes on to say, Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man. And he protected him. When he heard, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. So why does Mark put this story in where he does? It seems totally out of context here. Mark's gospel begins with Jesus being baptized by John in the Jordan River. But the last time John was mentioned was back in chapter 1, verse 14, which begins, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. So why does Mark's story return to tell the death of John in chapter 6? As we have just heard, the story of John's death follows Jesus sending the twelve out to the villages. The verses immediately following have the twelve returning and telling Jesus what they have accomplished. The Galilee connection would put Jesus in territory ruled by Herod. But I'll be honest, I don't see the reason for telling this story at this point in the gospel. Perhaps the message is that the good news of God continues regardless of the efforts to stop it, such as beheading John. Now the New Testament mentions Herod several times but they are not all in reference to the same person. Herod the Great was the Roman appointed king of Judea at the time of Jesus' birth, and he's responsible for the killing of all male Jews under the age of two. Herod the Great had 10 wives and multiple offspring, which is a very long and complicated story. Jason Bradley, the author of the blog that described the Herodian dynasty concluded with, the fact that no one has optioned the Herod family for a multi-season HBO drama should be considered negligence of the highest order. But we need to understand who a few of the characters are in Mark's narrative. The Herod in Mark's gospel is Herod Antipas, tetrarch of Galilee and Perea, which means he was a ruler of a divided kingdom appointed by Rome. He was not a king, although he is sometimes referred to as one in the Bible. Herod Antipas is one of Herod the Great's sons by his fourth wife. Herodias was Herod the Great's granddaughter through one of his sons by his second wife. After Herod the Great had had Herodias' father killed for treason, he betrothed her to Herod Philip, the son of his third wife, while she was just a young girl. Salome was Herodias' daughter by Herod Philip, although Mark's text refers to her as Herodias. I told you, it's complicated. All of the Herods were Roman citizens, 
with Jewish backgrounds and lineage. Most of Herod's sons were educated in Rome and lived in the household of Augustus Caesar. They tried to live in both worlds, but with limited success at times. Oh, and did I mention that Herod Antipas' mother was a Samaritan, which did not help his standing with the local Jews that he ruled over. Antipas was five years older than Herodias, and Philip was 12 years older. Philip had chosen to remain in Rome as, after his education, no doubt as a member of this arist aristocratic class, but not a ruler. Antipas had returned to Judea and eventually became Tetrarch when his father died. Now, according to one source, on a trip to Rome to visit his half-brother Philip, his niece and great-niece, Antipas and Herodias fell in love. Now, Jason Bradley, the blog author that I mentioned previously, puts a less romantic spin on this. He says, like the rest of the Herodian dynasty, it appears that Herodias was a little too ambitious to be yoked to a Herod that was going nowhere. Now, Roman law allowed divorce, and they were very simple to implement. Wives could divorce their husbands, and divorces among the aristocracy were quite common. Jewish law, by contrast, only gave men the right to divorce. But Herodias divorced her husband and half-uncle Philip. Antipas divorced his wife. And Herodias and her other half-uncle Antipas then married. The Jews were stunned and angered by this unholy marriage. Herodias, after all, was the wife of Antipas' own brother. The two had committed an unpardonable sin, according to their holy scriptures. For Leviticus 20:21 20, reads, if a man takes his brother's wife, it is impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness, and they shall be childless. Hence the condemnation by John who says, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Now you can see how this would bug Herodias and Herod. But Herodias is more like her grandfather, and she resents John a great deal and holds a grudge. For her, the solution is to kill John. But Herod chose only to imprison John, which does not sit well with Herodias. Which brings us to Herod's birthday celebration, where all of the local aristocracy and high-ranking military commanders are invited. Herod is obviously trying to put on a good show, and wine is probably freely flowing. And Herodias' daughter dances for the assembled guests. And Herod makes a brash announcement that he will grant Salome anything she asks for. Salome asks her mother what she should ask for. Now the sensible ask would be half of Herod's kingdom, as he has said that in front of all of his guests. But Herodias has revenge in mind and sees a way to get what she has wanted all along. And so we get to verses 27 and 28. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. Carolyn Lewis, who is an associate professor of biblical preaching at Lutheran Sem or Luther Seminary, a contributing writer to workingpreacher.org and the co-host of Sermon Brainwave, had this rather grisly comment about the details of John's death. She says, John's head is the final dish of the birthday banquet. It's a monstrous, horrific detail of John's death. Mark portrays Herod as a figure who we might pity. He is a man caught between a rock and a hard place, but of his own making. He's made a foolish promise to his stepdaughter, and when she asks for something he does not want to grant, he chooses to save face with the nobility and the military commanders that is entertaining by keeping his oath. But in his heart and in his head, he knows that killing John is wrong and is grieved by the result, as verse 26 states. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he didn't want, did not want to refuse her. Now, as I said at the beginning, it is hard to find the good news in this story. There's no happy ending for John, who ends up killed by those in power. Similarly, a short time later, Jesus' life will also end in death at the hands of those in power. 
We have all probably had times in our lives when we have made a bad decision or said something or done something foolish that has backed us into a corner. We have often seen this behavior in some of the decisions or statements made by our political leaders. So what can we take away from this gospel reading? Maybe we need to ask ourselves some tough questions. Do we lead by example or do we try to impress the wrong people? Do we stand up for the marginalized or do we abandon them by our inaction? Do we speak out against injustice or do we accept it by our silence? Do we have the moral courage to do what is right or will we follow the path of Herod? Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy parent, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon your beloved church, lavish your wisdom upon us, and redeem us from our faults, that by our witness all might praise your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer awesome creator. You steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Spring up green growth from the earth, nourish the growth of fruit, grain, and other crops, and bless the work of farmers and laborers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the oppressed, Turn the ears of those who are in power to the voices of prophets in our own day. Protect those who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty and are in need of your presence, including those we name aloud or quietly in our hearts.
Comfort all who are survivors of violence. Guard the refugee and the immigrant and protect all those who are victims of prejudice and discrimination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for this holy house and all who worship here. We pray especially for those whose efforts behind the scenes often go unnoticed. We pray for the custodians and the maintenance workers, our property committee, our office staff and volunteers, and all of our volunteers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for the saints, martyrs, and prophets who have died in the faith. We remember those in this community who have recently died. United with them as God's children, assure us that we are yours forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. We now invite you to share peace with the world around you. We invite you to send someone a text message, give someone a call, or open your front door and shout, peace be with you into your neighborhood. The peace of Christ be with you always. We now come to our time of offering. And as always, we want to begin with thank you. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your continued support because all of that is what makes Trinity Trinity. We also want to take a moment to remind you that uh, after our time of offering is our time of communion. So now is also a good time to make sure you have your bread, your wine and your grape juice for communing together. Thank you. table. After all, we are all children of God, as and such, no one is turned away from the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes In the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest Holy Maria, merciful God Heaven and earth are full of your glory in great love you sent us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, in the cross, opened his arm to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it, it to all to drink. 
saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all the people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we wait his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the will of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to who, when you and the Holy Spirit, all are honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us in whatever version or language you prefer. Our Father, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día y perdona nuestras ofensas así como nosotros también perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Porque tuya es el reino, tuya es la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ share for you. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feet, the body and blood of your Son, by your Spirit, strength us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hello Trinity, I'm Town Crier Doug. Town Crier Caden. And these are your Trinity announcements. Doug, we have breaking news. We are happy to announce that Pastor Amy Bruno has accepted the call to be our pastor here at Trinity. We hope to announce the date of her arrival next week. So we have some breaking news next week, I hope. Mm -hmm. Please note, as the summer weather continues, it will be a few weeks before the new air conditioning is installed. So the sanctuary may be warm until then. Come in comfortable clothes. I do recommend the shorts. 
Save the date. We will host the Summer Health Fair on August 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Activities that day will include chair yoga, aerobics, brain activities, cooking with samples, emergency preparedness, spiritual wellness, blood pressure checks, and much more. Save that date on your calendar now. That's August 14th. Thanks to the sponsors of this event, the Health Ministries Committee and Trinity Disaster Preparedness Team. Now, this week's birthdays. Happy birthday to Ann Ruth. Marva Jo Deal. And Gordon Johnson. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. You know, Caden, we haven't done letters. Yeah, you're right. So let's do some letters. Let's see if some people have written. So we'll get out the old Trinity mailbox. There's a letter. Dear Town Criers, I really enjoy your show, but there's one thing I'm very suspicious about. Mm -hmm. Your random Bible verses, I don't think they're very random. I think you pre-select them. That's a oh, weird okay. accusation. Yes, but, uh, can you speak to this? Uh, sincerely, KS. Well, KS, I understand that. I understand that maybe it looks like it's not completely random, but trust that's the spirit moving us. These random Bible verses are just how the mm -hmm. spirit moves us. And, you know, but you do bring up a point. We want you guys to trust us. So I think what we'll do this time, we'll do random Bible verses, but I'm going to do it blindfolded, so that it's completely random. No chance of us knowing what the verse chapters are. Now, uh, for those of you who don't remember random Bible verses, we take books of the Bible, chapter, and verse. And we just randomly pick these. Again, the spirit moves us. But this time, blindfolded. So I'm going to blindfold myself so I cannot see anything that's in there. Caden, how's that look? Well, uh, oh, Caden, how's that look? Good. All right. So we are completely blind. This is the spirit leading us. Is this the... Uh, that's the book of the Books Bible. Of Bible. Oh, okay, I'm going to mix these up. Psalm. Mm -hmm. Focus Psalm. And this is chapters. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, it looks like chapter 101. Okay. All right, and then uh, verse. The right one? Uh, the wrong one. Oh, thank you. See? I cannot see a thing. Verse 7. Okay. So we've got Psalms 101, right? Mm hmm. Verse 7. Let's see what the Spirit has moved us to. Completely random. No one who practices deceit shall remain in my house, no one who utters lies shall continue in my presence. Spirit moves us in an odd way. Odd way. Yeah. Well, um, that's uh, that's it for our announcements this week. Um, as always, our top story tonight for you hard of hearing or Larry's out there. Caden will be assisting. Our top story tonight. Our top story tonight. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Have a very blessed week. Have a very blessed week. <laughs> <laughs>